Chapter 1, Section 3. Okay, let's talk about linear functions. A function that is defined by f of x equals ax plus b, where a and b are real numbers, is called a linear function. And the graph is a line. The solution to the function is an ordered pair, an x and y value, that makes the equation true. A represents a constant rate of change, while B represents the initial value of the function when x is 0. If something changes at a constant rate, it can be modeled by a linear function. For example, we have f of x equals 3x plus 6. Another way of writing that is y equals 3x plus 6. The points 0, 6 and negative 1, 3 are both solutions because 6 equals 3 times 0 plus 6, and 3 equals 3 times negative 1 plus 6. Okay, we're going to be graphing the line y equals 3x plus 6, which is the equation we just looked at. On the left, we have an xy chart. We picked values for x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, and we solved for y. And we got 0, 3, 6, and 9. Then we put those points on the graph. Connect the points and you have the line. Notice that 0, 6 and negative 2, 0 are the x and the y intercepts of the line. And x equals negative 2 is called the 0 of the function. When we're graphing a line with your graphing calculator, either TI-83 or 84, you're going to go to the y equals menu, and under y1, you will put in 3x plus 6, and then hit graph, and you will see the graph. This particular viewing window has a minimum and maximum value of negative 10 and 10 for x, and the same for y. When we're graphing a line, it's a really good idea to find the x and y intercepts. And in order to do that, well, to find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0 and you solve for x. And then to find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0 and solve for y. All right, let's let f be a function. Then any number c for which f of c is 0 is called a 0 of the function. In other words, any x value that gives you a 0 y value is called a 0. The point c 0 is an x-intercept for the graph as well as being the 0. Okay, let's try this example. I'm going to graph the line y equals negative 2x plus 5. Pause the recording to try the problem and resume the recording to check your answer. The first thing we did was we found the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The x-intercept is 2.50. The y-intercept is 0, 0.5. We then plotted those points on the graph and connected the points with a straight line. Okay, let's try this problem. We have a 100-gallon tank full of water being drained at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. You have three questions to answer. The first one wants you to write a linear function that models this situation. Part B asks how much water is in the tank after four minutes. And Part C asks you to graph the function. Pause the recording, attempt the problem, and then re resume the recording to check your answer. We know that an equation of a line is the constant rate of change times x plus the initial amount. The water is being drained at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. That's our rate of change, and since it's going down, we use a negative. So negative 5x plus the initial amount, the tank started with 100 gallons of water. So f of x equals negative 5x plus 100. To determine how much water is in the tank after 4 minutes, we're going to replace x with 4. And when we do that and solve, we get 80 gallons. Part C, we're going to take the equation we found in A. We're going to find the value of y when x is 0, the value of x when y is 0, and we're going to graph it. So the y-intercept, 
when x is 0, it's 100. So 100 gallons in it. When time is 0, there are 100 gallons. The x-intercept is where y equals 0. And when we put y in for 0 and solve, we get 20, 20 minutes. And what that means is it takes the tank 20 minutes to empty. We're going to talk about a constant function now. The constant function is of the form f of x equals b. b must be a real number, and the graph is going to be a horizontal line. The y-intercept of the graph is the point 0, b. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is just very simply b. An example would be the equation f of x equals negative 3. No matter what value you put in for x, the y value doesn't change. It will always be 3. And the result is the horizontal line you see. All right, a function defined by f of x equals b, where b is a real number, is called a constant function. Its graph is a horizontal line with intercept b. If b is not equal to 0, there is no x-intercept. If b is equal to 0, every number is the x-intercept. Every constant function is linear. A little bit about domain and range. Unless stated, the domain of a linear function is the set of all real numbers. From time to time, they will limit that, mostly for word problems. Uh, they limit it to numbers that make sense in the situation. But for the most part, the domain is going to be all real numbers. The range of a non-constant linear function is the set of all real numbers. Remember, with a constant linear function, the range consists of just one number. As we see here, the range of the constant function f of x equals b is just very simply b. And when we're graphing lines, or really any function, it's really important to try to get what's called a comprehensive graph. What that means is you're going to show all of the points that are important to the graph. With a line, the important points are the x and the y-intercept. So notice we have the same function graphed with two different windows here. The first window goes from negative 5 to 5 for x and negative 20 to 20 for y and we can clearly see where the line crosses both axes. The second window goes from negative 10 to 10 for x and negative 4 to 4 for y. Here, we can only see the x-intercept and not the y-intercept, so this is not a good window for this line. Okay, when we're talking about lines, we also need to talk about slope. And the diagram there kind of shows you how the slope is, is figured out. The slope of the line passing through the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is m, the little m represents slope, is delta y over delta x, those triangles, the Greek letter delta, and we use deltas in mathematics to represent uh, change, use it in science for that as well. The change in y is the y2 minus y1, and the change in x is x2 minus x1. Notice it's really important that the change in x is not equal to 0. Now when you're asked to find the average rate of change between two points, what you're really being asked to find is the slope between those two points. The actual graph between the points may not be a straight line, and the change may not be constant, but that doesn't matter. The average rate of change is the slope between those two points. Here's a way to think about it. When you drive from home to school, you don't drive a constant speed the entire time. However, you can find the average speed by taking the change in miles and dividing by the change in time. That will give you your average speed for the trip or your average rate of change. All right, let's try this example. Find the slope of the line passing through the two given points. Pause the recording to do the problem and resume to check your answer. Okay, here you can see the numbers going into the slope formula. 
We have 3 minus negative 1 over negative 5 minus 2, and the answer is negative 4 sevenths. Okay, using the slope and a point, you're going to graph a line. So you're going to graph the line that passes through the point 2, 1 and has the slope negative 4 thirds. Pause the recording to try the problem and resume to check your answer. All right, the first thing you want to do when solving this is you want to plot the point 2, 1. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to use the slope. Remember that the top number gives you the change in y. Since the slope is negative, we're going to go down, and the top number is 4. So go down 4, and then we're going to go right 3. That's our change in x. And that will be our next point, and then we can connect the two points and make a line. All right, we're going to talk about the geometric orientation based on the slope. In other words, when you see a slope, what can you determine about that line just from looking at the slope itself? First of all, if the slope is greater than zero, then we know that the line rises from left to right. Secondly, if the slope is less than zero, we know that the line falls from left to right. And finally, if the slope equals zero, the line must be horizontal. Here you see that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. You think of slope as a measure of how slanted the line is. It's, think of it as being perfectly flat. There is no slant. That makes a lot of sense. And using two points on the line, you can calculate that the slope is indeed zero. Now a vertical line, on the other hand, is, is a problem. The vertical line has an undefined slope. The reason for that is when you take two points and you use the slope formula, the denominator is zero. And whenever we have a zero denominator, it is undefined. A vertical line with x-intercept of k zero has an equation of the form x equals k and has an undefined slope. The line graphed here would be the line x equals four. Slope-intercept form of the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, probably the most popular form equation um, form for the equation of a line. M represents the slope, B represents the y-intercept or the value of the y when x is equal. Okay, here's an example for you to try. Without graphing these, just based on the equations themselves, match 1, 2, and 3 with the appropriate graphs A, B, and C. Pause the recording to do this problem and then resume to check your answer. Okay, number one, we have 2x plus 3. The slope is positive, so it must be going up to the right, and the only graph that does that is C. Equation two, we have a negative slope, and A and B are both going down, so that doesn't help us a whole lot, but notice our y-intercept is positive three. Well, the only place where it crosses the axis at positive three would be graph A. And then finally, number three, well, there's nothing left but, but B. We have a negative slope, so it's going down, and it crosses the y-axis at negative 3. Here's an application problem for you to try. It says, in 2006, about 60 billion text messages were sent in the U.S. During the next six years, text messaging increased on average by 407 billion messages per year. Part A, you want to find the values for M and B so that Y equals MX plus B models the number of text messages sent in billions X years after 2006. And you're going to estimate the number of text messages sent in 2012 for Part B. Try this problem, pause the recording while you're doing that, and then resume the recording to check your answer. Okay, for part A, x equals 0 is going to correspond to 2006. The y-intercept is going to be 0, 60. So our b is 60. The rate of change in the number of text messages was 407 billion per year. So that's going to be our slope, m equals 407. So we have y equals 407x plus 
60. And for part B, we're going to take our equation and let x be 6, which is six because 2012 is 6 years after 2006. And we get 2,502. Now keep in mind, that's 2,502 billion or 2.5 trillion. And that estimates the number of text messages that were sent in 2012. Okay, these are some classwork problems. Pause the recording to try them and then resume the recording to check your answers. Okay, these are the solutions to the problems on the previous page. Pause the recording while you study them and then resume it to go to the next set of problems. Problems to try. Pause the recording while you try them and then resume the recording to check your answers.